y'all y'all heard of the show um agatha all along mm-hmm. it's the marvel show it's 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 the second yeah chapter of the um wanda yeah vision w- wanda oh. vision yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so <laughs> i'm sorry that one i was scarred so i i um i was trying to watch it and i'm like man why does this feel so much more evil because we grew up with witch stuff right mm-hmm. we grew up with charmed and mm-hmm. uh bewitched witch. and sabrina the teenage, sabrina witch. The teenage mm-hmm. witch for some reason this one it the reason why it feels a little stranger is because i think they're doing a lot of research into actual occult practices yeah. mm-hmm. it's not just like the disney version of a witch it's the actual version of a witch that they're yeah. tapping into mm-hmm. and there were a couple of things i heard in the last episode i'm like why are they saying this stuff out loud like they're they're like revealing <laughs> real occult tactics so mm-hmm. anyway there's this show y'all heard of um new rock stars they they do a lot of marvel recaps mm-hmm. stuff like that um and the 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 man that's like kind of like the main host of it uh, he's really good at breaking down shows um there's a lot of them are uh, all of the people on this uh channel are really good at breaking down shows and he was breaking down agatha all along and he mentioned something that caught my attention about modern the modern day comedy modern day improv listen to what he says now i only bring this up because half of this cast so Agatha came from a background of long form improvisation like most of us in New Rock Stars. But this ritual that we're seeing is really an invocation, the summoning of a spirit. But in improv, an invocation is an exercise and common opening to a half hour show format we call The Herald. One of many ways performers brainstorm ideas for upcoming scenes on stage in front of the audience. In an invocation, the team gets a suggestion of an object and then invokes it by endowing it with physical descriptions like banana, like it is yellow, it is cold, it is rotting, you know? In the second phase, is how you use it, it's function, and you say you are. So like, you are a snack, you are a weapon in Mario Kart. The third phase is its metaphorical meaning where you say thou art. So thou art a too penetrable shell masking a vulnerable heart. And then ultimately you end with like one word summations. Like I am delight. And then everyone together says I am banana. This thing was developed by a guy named Del Close who was like the cult-like guru of this whole improv art form. and was actually a practicing Wiccan in Toronto. And I know all of you improv nerds felt it. Alice and Lilia reveal that Lorna was trying to open the witch's road with her version of the ballad and that her fans were her kind. Right, real her quick. Musician- I'm a, just break this down. You hear what he said? Mm-hmm. The guy who is basically the father of modern day improv, which a lot of your comedians come from, Saturday Night yeah, Live, all the most of the yeah. comedy stars that you see came from that world, right? Yeah. The actual practice of how they prepare for a show and how they do a show is based on witchcraft. Yeah. Oh, wow. Crazy. What's going on here? Witchcraft. Did y'all know that? <laughs> Actually, I did not know that. I did not know that. Yo, your eyes are I, I know for open. You. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know like, you what? Like, I know you that at school. Yeah, that, that's, that's your lane, too. I know you like. <laughs> now, he did say that form of improv. Because I've yeah. done improv, but I ain't never did nothing like that. I, I have, too. And I've never, I had yeah. never heard of this, but I'm aware of it, right? Yeah. You, you, see, you, see, so you see hints of this on, like, whose line is it anywhere? They do yeah. some of this yeah. invocation yeah. stuff, right? They'll yeah. call out an object, and they yeah. you see them working through this right. yeah. to make it a real thing. Wow. And, and even when I did improv, I remember some of this terminology. Yeah. I remember some of the... Um, yeah. You know, a lot of the principles are like, you know, whatever somebody says is true is now true. You can't yeah. contradict what somebody says. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is getting pulled from this guy. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, how That's how wild. is that okay? It, it, it's so it's so crazy that like I was telling this to Sean earlier. I was like, I watched. Um, I, I'm a big. Uh, people know I'm big on documentaries. I'm big on pop documentaries. I'm big on different things. And one of my favorites is the Comedy Store. They have a documentary about the, the famous Comedy Store in Los Angeles. That was um, in like in the in the eighties, seventies. It, w- it was really popular. It was getting popular, ready to go crazy. And I was telling him, I said like, um, y'all know who Lily Thompson is? She's that famous actress from back in the day. Yeah. She used to do seances there, and now that place is that place is like haunted. Like I've seen it on like specials and stuff. Like I was haunted and stuff like that. So when he said that, it didn't it didn't dawn on me like that is. That that's not happening because honestly, I just think New Ageism, the form of you know Earth New Ageism, is very popular. Was very popular back there in the seventies and the in the sixties, seventies when it start first kicking off. So when when I heard that, I was like, I wasn't I wasn't taken back. So man. so li- listen to this next part. <clears throat> this one will feel familiar to you. I cannot believe the show the the show Agatha all along 
said this out loud. Lorna was trying to open the witch's room in the ballad and that her fans were her coven. Now for musicians as well as for very religious individuals, there is a belief in the power of the masses singing or chanting something together in unison as a way to heal. This was particularly a 60s to 70s new age concept of healing and uniting the world through song and then like Coca-Cola ruined it, man. But I like that this episode like takes it back and makes it a very real thing. Alice says Lorna had to sell the back catalog to keep the house, but it sounds like the ballad had an ongoing literal cult following. Yeah, they put a creepy distortion effect on it so, just to make it so sound. did you hear what he said mm-hmm. <clears throat> so in the show she's trying to find her mom um her mom was a famous singer and she had a song that was really a spell and you find out why it was a spell in in the show and they said you heard them say it the crowd was their coven so if you understand a coven they need it, you always see witches in threes yeah. you know mm-hmm. three or more um, so basically what they're saying is is that the witches, the other witches in the, their coven is yeah. the crowd. And what they also said was the song getting played over and over again on their, you know, on their, you know, devices is reinvoking the spell over and over again. That's deep, bro. Ah. This is stuff that we talk about, but like they, they're saying it yeah. out loud. That's it's deep, crazy. Bro. Yeah, that's crazy. That's deep, bro. So, so here's this last part, and this is um, this I'm sure you've heard of. They also did the thing where they did the backwards. <clears throat> a lot of people in the um, '60s and '70s were doing like um, songs where they do something in reverse, mm-hmm. and then you play it back with some satanic. Artists. Yeah, they did that in the show. This comes from. In the show. <laughs> From a lot of urban legends you may have heard dating back to the 60s and the 70s, a band's hiding satanic messages in their albums when they were played backwards. It's called black masking. Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven is a popular example of this. There's this verse. If there's a bustle in your hedgerow, don't be alarmed now. But when you reverse that, listeners think it sounds like this. <laughs> Also famously, the Beatles, Revolution 9 spawned the whole Paul is dead urban legend. But really, these rumors mostly were spread by Christian groups going through the satanic panic in the 80s, which led to a lot of them destroying their albums. So you see what they they call it, satanic panic. Satanic Mm. panic. So is it (laughs) Christians making this up? Leaving things that aren't true, or is this real demonic tactics by people who worship Satan interjecting their belief system into music to affect people? I, I definitely think so. The first thing with the first part about the guy who came up with the improv and how <laughs> you were saying he's pretty much a Wiccan, I was just thinking about the aspect of how many people who are aspiring actors mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah. It's like they're so wicked, they've infiltrated that they've they've automatically making you do these things, being totally unaware of it. Um, and I've also uh, I've read a book called He Came to Set the Captives Free. It's about a young lady who was caught up in Satanism, mm-hmm. and um, she was traveling around the country with high ranking witches and different things. She broke down how they had different sectors of witches around the country, would not, and they were going to the studio with some of these major rock artists during that time, and they would blatantly have witches come in and do seances and things over the music. And I was thinking it makes sense because if following Christ is a narrow road, that means many would not find it. But when rock artists come out with these songs, to see the way the masses just come to it, and then if you look in their eyes and you see the atmosphere in there, it's like it's cultish, it's mm-hmm. evil, you know what I'm saying? It's satanic. And it's like, why are them singing a song about love, making these people act like this? There gotta be some spiritual going on behind it. So I think it's that. And I think one of the greatest weapons that the enemy have is making people believe that he's not real or it doesn't exist. So you can blindly be doing improv, doing incantations, invocations, and not even realize it because they have a set format to where if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you don't know Jesus, you're going to be influenced by this mm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? And it, that's just wicked on all levels. So, yeah, that's I, crazy. I, I do think that, yeah, I, I think all of it's real. And then also, I remember, I remember um, the cat, remember, I don't know, people were saying he was a conspiracy theorist back in the day, Mike Todd. That's what he was saying. Um, but he was saying that they were putting the masters on pentagrams and calling spirits on them at at the record labels and then sending uh, them out. 
You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, because the master recording, what happens, if people don't know what mastering does, once you get the master recording back, it just makes duplicates off that master. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if, if you're calling entities into that that into that master and that master is going out spiritually, then how much how, how much do you believe though that objects and songs and images can be like possessed with a demon? Do you believe those? Is that what's really going on? How much power is, does this really have? Are we overstating it? Well, I think you've got to look at it from a standpoint of the sa- sound and sound of light. Could sound of light be used to, because that's what, in essence, that's what it is. is you're, you're looking at visually, looking at something that's giving you the sound of, the, sound of, the visualization of light, and then also the sound of light of what you're listening to. So the question goes, could, could the enemy use mm-hmm. light and can he use sound so, I mean, because think about think about the story. Yeah, we always go back and forth with David when he's playing a song to get the demonic stuff out of what's the name. So yeah, you don't no, think so. you don't think it could be reversed. In my mind, I'm like, well, yeah. Satan could pervert that and try to put he, he was different. A, and like this, is what people fail to realize. Of course, we know that the devil, he was a musician, or not musician, but you know, he was a, he was a worshiper. You know mm-hmm. what I'm yeah. saying? But he was also an angel of war. You know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. You look in Ezekiel, it talks about he was an angel of war as well. So when you're an angel of war, what are you going to use? You're going to use war tactics. Mm-hmm. And a lot of one of the war tactics is things like being camouflaged or things are being hidden. It makes you have the appearance of one thing, but you're actually being yeah. attacked. Mm-hmm. So I think when you look at music, when you look at film, you look at all these different things we deem as harmless. We always got to remember we're in the midst of a spiritual war. Right. Whatever you're doing, whether you're aware or you're unaware, it's, it's, it's giving glory to one thing or the other. It's mm-hmm. giving glory to God or it's not. Um, so I don't I don't think everybody purposely is going out here doing witchcraft and incantations, but if it's already just been planted there to where you're doing this, you could be what someone told me is called a blind witch. Yes. To where um, you're doing witchcraft and you're doing these different things blindly, not even knowing it because you're just thinking it's just a harmless thing that you're doing. Like you're mm-hmm. just trying to be an actor, not even knowing that you out here. And then next thing you know, you're going through all this spiritual stuff at the crib. You're like, man, what's going on? I'm just trying to get a role, mm-hmm. you know? So I, I think it's very much so. So then find that, because I've never heard what a, what a blind witch is. Blind witch is that it's like, like like this situation here when people are doing invocation don't even realize oh, gotcha, it. Or gotcha. it's certain spiritual practices that witches and, and wiccans are do and wizards are do that you're not aware of, but you look at our culture. Mm-hmm. It's evil people behind our culture who are pushing you toward these acts and pushing you toward these things and you're thinking it's harmless because you're not knowledgeable on that spiritual world. Yeah. So mm-hmm. now you're wondering why you're going through so many things and why things are happening in your life the way they are. You're doing witchcraft without realizing it. So wow. you're a blind yeah. witch. You know, you're wow. a blind witch. Yes. I definitely had a friend who didn't realize, like, I hit her up and I was like, oh, let's do this fast together. And in the fast, she realized that she was a witch. Dang. And I was like, what? She was like, she did. She, she just didn't understand it because even the Bible says like the enemy, like the God, the prince of the earth, blinds their minds to these things, so they really don't understand it. But she was like, she had a whole altar to her ancestors in her mm. room. She had her Bible on the altar. She was like, she couldn't believe like God opened her eyes to all the things that she right. was doing, manifest manifestations, yeah. like all of these things, and. She was like, I was literally putting water in a cup to feed the ancestors mm. and praying at this altar at the same time. So, so here was that water disappearing at night? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's called evaporation. So, <laughs> Bible verses about witchcraft. So, this is one that um, we were talking about earlier. Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. This is First Chronicles ten thirteen. He did not keep the word of the Lord and even consulted a medium for guidance. Yeah. That's what me and Jeremiah were talking about that. Yep. First Samuel fifteen twenty three. For rebellion is like the sin of divination and arrogance, like the evil of idolatry, because you have rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you as king. Uh, First Samuel twenty two twenty three. Stay with me. Don't be afraid. The man who wants to kill you is trying to kill me too. I don't know if that's related. Let's see. Um, Second Chronicles 33, 6. He sacrificed his children in the fire in the valley of Ben Hinnom, practiced divination and witchcraft, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spirits. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. Do not turn to mediums or seek out spiritualists, for you will be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. This is Leviticus 19.31. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I will set my face against anyone who turns to mediums and spiritualists mm-hmm. to prostitute themselves by following them. I will cut them off from their people. Leviticus 26. A man or woman who is a medium or spiritualist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own 
heads. Leviticus 2027. 20, mm. In light of a lamp will never shine in you again. The voice of bridegroom and bride will never be heard in you again. The merchants were the world's people were were the world's important people. By your magic spell, all the nations were led astray. I mean, wow. there's a lot of serious yeah. warnings. Uh, here's another one. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immor- immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, mm, selfish delicious. ambition, dis- dissensions, factions. So the Bible is treating witchcraft as seriously as it treats every other sin. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, yeah. This is real. Yeah. So we got like we got to be really, really careful with this. Um, I do think some things are maybe people's imaginations of what witchcraft is capable of. I don't want to overstate his power, but it's not nothing. And <laughs> we, we, we got to watch out for it. Can I ask y'all a question, man? Um, so we know we all listen to hip-hop music, for, um, of course. Do you think it's just okay, every week we, we do this show, we find different topics, we look at different things. I'm just seeing more and more evidence of the trickery <laughs> and the wickedness that's going mm-hmm. on behind this stuff. Mm-hmm. Are we as Christians sometimes making excuses to listen to the stuff that we want to listen to when there's blatant evidence that we probably shouldn't be? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm personally getting convicted. Um, if I'm honest, because I listen to hip-hop music. I don't listen to the stuff like where it's a whole bunch of murder and killing because that's just not my life. I have no reason to listen to that, especially with my daughter in the car and stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's almost like, man, a lot of these folks, like even hearing that today, it's like some of these guys just following their dreams, just trying to be an artist. But you don't know what the label is doing. The all these label is there, mm-hmm. they quitting and doing this stuff now. The stuff going on with Diddy is showing all this wickedness behind the scenes and all this mm-hmm. kind of stuff. We don't know really what's behind this stuff. The artist may be innocent, but the label is not. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why we focused on it so much this year because I don't think everybody realizes how devious the people behind what you've ingested for. 30, 40 years are. Yeah. yeah. And honestly, don't listen to music anymore. I don't listen to music anymore. Like, I just don't have, it's, I don't have the taste for it anymore. I, I remember I told y'all I went on a year fast for music, mm-hmm. gospel, everything. Yeah, no music, yeah. period. And ever since then, I just, I'm like, it don't do nothing for me no more. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I kind of feel the same. Um, like, recently, I've just been, when you start reading Psalms, <laughs> Psalms yeah. is the truth. I've been in Psalms for a couple months because I'm just going book by book. I mean, chapter by chapter, but it's just real, man. And you start seeing what da- how David felt, how different other people felt, and you just reading what they're saying. Like, I, w- I stay away from this. I'm staying away from that. Yeah. People who gossip stay far away. I mean, yeah. I won't let nothing vile come in my face or all this other stuff. And it's just, at the end of the day, man, like, I've been on a place where, like, that's why I've been, like, so adamant about helping people find Christian alternatives to stuff. Mm-hmm. Because, I feel like, because I feel like at the end of the day, it may not it may not it may not take you to a place but it may take your heart to a place that you don't want it to go you know what i'm saying we we need to break the spell we've been under a spell mm-hmm. for our entire childhood mm. take a break from it and because what one thing i noticed when i got I got away from music and away from a lot of the media when you start seeing it again it's clear as day what's going on yeah. like you can see it you can hear the formula Mm-hmm. Like you could see the the magic, you know yeah. what I mean. Like you could see the spell. So yeah. just break the spell, get away from it, because you may not realize you're under a spell. Like why yeah. are you so drawn mm-hmm. to these people? Why are you so drawn to this music? It's not just natural. It's not your actual spiritual person. It's it's somebody they've they've put something on you that makes you drawn to negativity, and it's not. Yeah. It's, yeah. Not yeah. it's crazy, man. Lately, I've been just drawn to listen to more instrumentals. Like I've mm-hmm. been listening to, like, I listen to, like lo-fi instrumentals, things of that nature. Like I've been doing that more so. And even with that, you gotta be careful because you don't really yeah. know who's yeah. behind yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> right. It's deep. Make your own stuff. Um, <laughs> it's deep, man. I definitely wanted to comment as far as like overstating it because I the the kingdom of darkness does have power. He is the prince of the air. Mm-hmm. However, his power is nothing compared to the power exactly. of God yeah. and the power of Christ. So I don't think we're overstating. I think we do need to understand that this kingdom does has power, which is why the like the Lord wants us to do things for a reason, like be consecrated, be set apart, yeah. and. For that very reason, because also when he came to set the captives free, which I really loved how the Lord showed her a vision of open doors. Mm -hmm. So when you're listening to this stuff, you're participating in these things, it's opening doors and planting seeds in your life. And if you're not consecrated, then they have access to mess with you in different ways and different levels. 
Did so you, it's like, hmm? did you see in that book? Also, the book's so real. It's so good. It's in the beginning of the book. It's a prayer that she tells you that you need to pray before you read this book. She was like, before, yeah, before, before you even open this book and read it, the spiritual impact is so serious. She's like, I want to get really, it. What's the name of the book? Again? It can't. He came to, to set the captain. Cap- I, yeah. I could bring it for you. I'll okay. let you get mine. Yeah. But. Pray before you read that. Pray before it's it's a pray. whole prayer. My mom first gave it to me in high school, and I saw the prayer and closed the book. <laughs> I said, "I'm not ready yet." Why 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 she asked you to pray? Because she exposing so much wickedness. Yeah, yeah. man, you know how it is, you know. Yeah. When you exposing so much stuff, you you sus- making yourself susceptible to all kind of spiritual attack and things you're not even aware of. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think during that book, she was revealing so many different things. Now that I sit here and think about it, I remember times reading that book. I had to just close it and put it down and just pray and just ask God, just to, you know, what I'm saying, Protect yeah, you. yeah, man, because yeah. it was just. I would say this real quick, going back to Hollywood. I think I, I think when we talk about manifestation, we talk about new age law of attraction and stuff. That's the secret, mm-hmm. and that's. That's what people were saying. Also, it is a form of new age witchcraft. Was yeah. I'm thinking of something to bring into my life mm-hmm. to give me power, to give me money, mm-hmm. to give me all that stuff. And yep. yeah, man, I think I think I think. What we, and the reason why I told this to Sean before you guys got here, I said the reason why those shows back in the day with were witchcraft and stuff like that was because um, um, in the in the um, actual. Like the video we're gonna talk about later about the young lady she was talking about being a witch and you, you said somebody was like a white witch mm-hmm. when people don't go it's she was saying there's levels to witchcraft mm-hmm. like there's l- like big time level where some stuff is where it's just like you doing love potions or you you trying to get money or you trying to do that but when you start hexing people and putting death on people that's when you go to another level that's mm-hmm. what she said in there and her, uh, what's the name so I just think at the same time. That's why people, while we were growing up, even if they were showing like somebody like Bewitch G doing love stuff, it was like simple and it didn't, it didn't seem like, oh, that's just that. But I think right now is when we seen it, when we seen a video where somebody saying they use an actual witch's spells on yeah. shows and shows. Yeah. And this is not new. Yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Harry Potter was written by an actual witch. Those spells are real. Mm. 